Hi guys, my name is Tom, I'm the Tech Chap. Now I'm sure this isn't just me, but I often use my phone and sometimes my iPad before I go to bed, watching Netflix, browsing the web, maybe checking my social media. It's something that I think a lot of us do as we lay in bed with the lights out, nothing but a bright LED glow illuminating our faces from the screens of our technology. But I also think that when I do this, it makes falling asleep a lot harder. My brain feels more awake and more active. So I wanted to find out whether our tech really is keeping us awake and maybe, is it actually dangerous for us? So a survey conducted in the UK last year in 2014 revealed that most of us use electronic devices before we fall asleep. The survey revealed that 78% of adults, which rises to 91% for 18 to 24 year olds, would use their phones or tablets before they went to bed. Now the professor who conducted this survey explained that blue light from these devices suppresses the production of the sleep inducing hormone melatonin. So the screens are in fact chemically altering our brains, which makes falling asleep more difficult. As well as suppressing the production of melatonin, according to one optician, the blue violet light can also be hazardous and toxic to the back of your eyes, causing eye fatigue and dryness, and over a long period of time, potentially even permanently damaging our eyes. So what exactly is blue light? Well, being exposed to any sort of artificial light at night on a basic evolutionary level disrupts what they call our circadian rhythm, which is that physical and mental cycle our bodies go through on roughly a 24 hour cycle. Light has a big effect on this rhythm. For example, we are used to seeing orange at dawn and orange at dusk, but this is why if you take a long haul flight, you'll often find that the cabin lights try to help your circadian rhythm adjust to minimize jet lag by having blues and oranges to replicate what you should be seeing in terms of light. So what's so special about blue light? Well, only since 2001 have scientists known that light in the blue wavelength of the light spectrum, specifically in the 400 to 500 nanometer range, quite technical I know, which is described as high energy visible light or HEV, can have a actual physiological impact on our bodies and disrupt our production of melatonin. Now because blue light is so bright, it's ideal for LED devices like our phones, tablets, monitors, laptops and TVs. You're grateful for it when you're using a phone in broad daylight, maybe not so much last thing at night in the pitch dark though. So after millions of years of humans seeing sunrises followed by bright daylight and sunsets followed by darkness, it's not surprising that in the past 20 years or so since we've started being exposed to this particular high energy bright blue light emanating from our devices and screens that it might have actual impact on our health. Now as well as making it harder for you to fall asleep, there is research to suggest that exposure to blue light can also damage your eyes, have an impact on your blood pressure, your mood, and maybe even cause depression. Radiation from blue light, which on the light spectrum is also actually very close to UV radiation, is also considered to be a carcinogenic pollutant, meaning it's been linked to slightly higher cancer rates. Now I don't want to scare you, obviously I'm not suggesting that browsing the web or watching YouTube videos or catching up on some Netflix on your tablet before going to bed is going to kill you, um, but it's interesting that there is a measurable physiological effect on your body just from the light coming from the screens. I, th I thought that was pretty interesting that, you know, just looking at something in a certain light can actually have an impact on how our body works and how the chemicals are produced. Now in terms of brightness, ideally for a good night's sleep you should refrain from any TV, mobile devices or even lighting I suppose in your bedroom in the couple of hours prior to going to sleep but I doubt many of us would really want to do that. It sounds kind of boring. Uh, and there are also apps available though, like Nightly, that do automatically reduce the brightness of your device at certain preset times to help reduce the impact of using them before sleep. Although you could just turn the brightness down yourself, of course. So dimming your phone is gonna help. You know, it's gonna block out some of the light, but how do we specifically block out or limit our exposure to blue light? You can invest in light filtering glasses from companies like Gunner, which claim to help reduce the impacts of computer vision syndrome or CVS, as well as mitigate the problems associated with exposure to blue light from screens. Low blue light monitors are also available for those who like to use their computers late into the night, perhaps if you're uh, burning the midnight oil, for example. Companies including Asus, BenQ and ViewSonic have dedicated monitors that feature eye care technologies to help reduce levels of blue light that you're exposed to. It's not just physical glasses or monitors though that can help. F.Lux or Flux software available for Windows, Mac, Linux and even iOS devices like your iPhone and iPad adjusts the color on the screen to reduce the stimulating effects of the blue light at night and even simulate the colors of sunrise and sunset to help match your natural circadian rhythm. Android users can use a similar app called Twilight. For me though, one of the best ways of helping you to fall asleep 
is by having orange or red lights in your bedroom, LED mood lighting can be a great way to help combat the effects of blue light. And I personally actually use the Philips Living Colors mood light, which you can buy for around 50 pounds. I set it to a fairly dim orange color using the remote control, and I genuinely think it helps me feel more tired at night. And for the opposite effect, of course, sometimes I'll set it to a bright blue color first thing in the morning to help me feel more awake. I'd actually genuinely recommend it. It's quite good value as well. So if I were writing a correlation implies causation tabloid headline, the title might read iPhones cause cancer, for example, or reading on a screen before bed might be killing you as the Huffington Post actually does put it in one article. In reality though, small scale lab tests and animal testing aside, the most obvious and common impact on the majority of us is making it more difficult for us to fall asleep. It doesn't affect everyone of course, and there are other variables like noise, temperature, stress, uh, which will impact on how you sleep. But it's still interesting to know well, I thought it was interesting to know at least that light does have a genuine effect on your body's circadian rhythm and as well as being potentially damaging to your eyes can actually alter the sort of chemical balance in your brain. So as for sleep in particular though, it basically comes down to the blue light's high energy particles are suppressing our melatonin production so we simply don't feel as tired. If you suffer from insomnia or have trouble sleeping at night, just try to avoid bright screens before you go to sleep. Alternatively, you could look into some of these uh, light filtering glasses, low blue light monitors, or even try and get some uh, mood lighting, some orange lighting in your room last thing at night. I hope you found this video helpful and let me know whether using tech late at night affects your sleep as well. Don't forget to like and of course subscribe. Thank you very much for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Cheers.